My name is Pavel. I'm Steve. And we're going to talk today about hunting value and what, does product, what product owners need to do in order to discover the right requirement. But before we do that, little, let's look, do a little exercise to find out who's in the room. Um, it's a quick pop-up. We're going to name some roles. If you are fulfilling that role, just stand up. We're gonna, well, we're gonna, let's play like a game of popcorn. Yeah. So, so pop-up like popcorn. So we call, if you're in the role, pop-up. And then sit back down, and you might pop up more than once because people yeah. are in more than one role, right? We might have multiple roles, but let's try it out. Product owners in the room. Business analyst. You gotta, we got to see you. got to pop up enough for us to see you. Requirements engineers. Scrum masters and coaches. <laughs> Developers. Testers. UX people. Sales people. Company owners. Yay. <laughs> Customers. All right. So All right, I think we figured who's in the room. Yeah, that gives um, us a good idea. Yeah. So what we, what we want to do, the most of this session is going to be called uh, the Discovery Dojo. And yeah, we just want to let you know that this is not going to be a session, hopefully this is not going to be a session where we stand up and talk to you a lot. Both of us love to talk, so if it turns into a session where we're talking to you a lot, give us a signal, because we don't want to stand here and talk to you a lot. We want to create an environment where you will work with each other to find the answers. So if you're, if you're expecting a session where we give you a lot of information and that you write it down and walk away, that's not what this type of session is, just to let you know in advance. So if that's the kind of session you're expecting, you might want to look for a different session. If, when you remain here, we're going to be doing a dojo, which means um, we're going to have some exercises where you're working together to practice this information. And um, yeah, so the dojo sounds like your passion, uh, Steve. What, uh, what, do you, what other passions do you have? Yeah, gee, I, I, I'm passionate about a lot of things. I'm passionate about Lego Serious Play. I'm passionate about working with people. I'm passionate about working with Scrum Masters. But another thing I realized is that in my career uh, in Agile, I started as a Scrum Master. Now I'm an independent Agile coach, and I go around the world training and coaching. Um, and I, in addition to working with Scrum Masters and teams, what I realized is that in a lot of the work we do in Agile, we start talking about the team and the Scrum Master, and we say, and there's a product owner, and the product owner does all this stuff, and that's about it. So I'm, I've become really passionate in working with the product owners and the people that work with the product owners to, to build up our knowledge there. So we've got great knowledge about Scrum Masters, great knowledge about teams, and I want to make sure we have great knowledge about product ownership. And I'm passionate about other things, which you'll probably hear about throughout the session. I just can't keep it in. So, but Pavel, tell, tell me what you're passionate about. I, I'm passionate about helping organizations to build innovative products by helping with out-of-box thinking. But I'm also passionate about my cat and the country I live in, South Africa. Great. Um, so, yeah. we started introducing ourselves. I guess we can continue. Um, I'm Steve Holyer. I'm based in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm not from Zurich, Switzerland. I'm originally from the US, but I've lived in Zurich for 16 years. So uh, we can also say I'm from Zurich. Like I said, I love to travel around the world. Uh, if you're interested in contacting me, you see my website and my Twitter handle. The same with me. Um, I'm from South Africa, Johannesburg, and there's a couple of contact details for me. And if you'd like to share your thoughts on Twitter, we, we came up with a special uh, uh, handle, it's a uh, hashtag discovery dojo. And we love when people tweet about us, so if you, you know, if you want to help us out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, it's kind of an, I, I started tweeting anonymously because I like to fuss about the people that I'm working with, and so I created a Twitter handle that nobody could associate with me. But then I started going to conferences and people Actually, one person who knew my Twitter handle wrote, we're really glad that Steve Holier is working. I'm like, oh, it's out. Now I have to stop fussing at work. But since everybody knew me by that handle, I didn't 
change it. It actually means mostly in Swiss German, it's a play on words that means Zurich style. Most of the session is based on the book Discover to Deliver, which was written by Ellen Gottesdiener and Mary Gorman. This is a fabulous book. We have it here. It's full of information. And if we were to really tell you what's in this book, we would be here for a week. Uh, so we're going to give you a taste of it. And if you want to find the book and read it and use it, uh, the authors have given us a discount code, which we'll display again at the end for a 40% discount. And they wrote the book on the material we're covering. I turned it into a dojo. I thought, this is something we need to have in a dojo. And then I talked to Ellen, the author, and she thought that was such a great idea that w Ellen and I uh, have run the dojo in Sweden, and we're going to run it again, we hope, in Florida. And in the meantime, Pavel has joined us. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we, we ran one in South Africa in, in October. Yeah. All right. So. Um, what, what are we doing today? So we're talking about a value hunt. And the people that help us hunt value, and to begin that hunt, we need to first hunt some product owners in the room. And we take a l kind of a broad view of product ownership. There's this role called product owner. But we believe more, than, more people do product owners ownership than just the person who's called the product owner. So even if you're title's not product owner, you can still join us as a brave PO. So we're hunting a few brave POs, and I'd like you to, if you will join us and be a brave PO, I'd like to ask you to stand up. Now I'm gonna, before you stand up, I'll tell you a little bit about what you're going to do. Um, in the dojo, you're going to bring a product need to, the, to your dojo group, and your group is gonna discuss your product need. So if you, uh, if you are a brave PO, that means a couple things. You need to have a real product need that you can bring to the group. Uh, it needs to be a real product need because we're talking about passion. You can, you can use an example, something you read in a book, but the passion's not there, and we really want the passion. That's why we're asking for a real product need. It has to be a real need you can share. I know a lot of people work on products that aren't, the information is not publicly available, so we're not asking you to share confidential information. It needs to be information you can share. And it needs to be, you need to bring real features that you will implement in the future. Sometimes when we run dojos, people bring a problem or a product need that they solved three iterations ago. And again, the passion's missing because they're just replaying something that's already happened. So we're looking for a real product that you can share and features that will be implemented or could be implemented in the future. So who do we have? Who's willing to volunteer to be our brave product owners? So we got one, two, three, four, five. So if you can stand up to help everybody see if you can stand up. We also have a backup plan in case we don't have enough product owners. So I'm not sure, I'm not through selling the, the selling the, we, we are right, we yeah. do have. Well, let okay, you know, I, yeah. you're cutting into my sales that. effort yeah. here. So, so we will pay you in a way for being a brave product owner. What you get paid, there's always value for value. The value you get, you'll get, you, the brave product owner, will get the most value out of this session. So that's what we give you back if you stand up. Do we have anybody else who would like, we need a few more if somebody else stands up. We've got one back here. Keep standing. That's great. Thank you very much. We also have the case study, um, which we're going to get to, uh, for if we, if we need a case study as well. So remember that you guys, we didn't take names, so you guys remember. All right, well, actually, if you brave POs can stay standing, what we need to do for the dojo, we're going to form groups of three to five. There needs to be at least three people in a group, and we'd like to, you to Five, if you go to six, nobody's going to complain, but there has to be at least three, and you need a brave PO in your group. So the brave POs, now if you hold up your hand so people can join you in a group, and... Uh, yeah, you're also not allowed to have more than one brave PO in the group, right? So that's right. Otherwise no, the you, group is too brave. Yes. So maybe it's self-organized. Um, uh, there are tables, but there are also groups of chairs which you put around. So if you can have five people or four people around you in some manner, 
So move around, give it a couple of seconds to organize. At least three. But six is all right. Six is okay. He doesn't have a product owner yet. So we have a product owner here looking for a group. Does anyone not have a product owner? I am saying I have no group. Okay, there's. There's a table here. Maybe we can form a table. Uh, any any volunteers to be, to join this group? They need a little bit of help. Come on. One or two people. Come on. N one. Oh, you, you want to have two? <laughs> we'll talk about it. Um, anyone wants to join this group? Yeah, here you go. So you're in four, so I'll go over there. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Three is fine. Awesome. So. Are there any groups with without a PO? I think we have every group Three. has a PO. Student and product. All right. Is everyone sorted? No problem. Cool. Is it, is am I seeing this correctly? Every group has a PO. Every group has a product owner. So yes. we don't need the case study. We don't need a case study. Yeah. Oh does man, anyone, this is does, awesome. Does anyone not have a product owner? Oh okay. man, the, the Germans are always too shy to, to volunteer. We always have to use yeah. the case study, but yeah. awesome, great, cool. all right. So uh, the first thing we want to do is to learn about your product vision. So the, the groups you're in will become your dojo groups. We're not going into the dojo yet, but the first thing uh, we would like you to do is um, share your product vision with your table. So that means the Brave PO, tell your product vision. You've got seven minutes, which means this needs to be a high level product vision. This needs to be an elevator pitch because we don't have more than seven minutes. And as you share your product vision, I'm sure the people around your table will want to ask questions. The danger is the questions get very involved. And again, we don't have time for that. It has to stay high level. And if you have time, you can create a short list of features that need to be released. We're not talking about user stories as a user. I want. We're just talking about a keyword features, a list of features that you might release in the coming releases. Any questions about that? Don't worry too much about the, the details of each of the features because we'll have opportunity to talk about them later. Just let's focus on creating a list of those features so far. Okay. Any questions? Let's start. Let's Seven start. minutes. Let's go. So as a brave PO, you probably know the vision, but you'll share it with your group.
Let's get some feedback. So how many items did you end up with you in your list of features, maybe initial product backlog? Just let us know, shout it out. Five, three, zero, five. All right, cool. So what we're gonna do, uh, so what we'd like to do now is to think of how would you prioritize in your list? How would you select Maybe for the next release, if you say six weeks or three sprints, we put six there, but because of, an, of the number of items in your backlog, I would assume they're quite big. So if you were to select one or two, what the criteria would be for you to prioritize your list? Value. Value, all right. So, so we always, uh, when we talk about prioritization, oops, we talk about value. Interesting, but what does it mean? What does value mean? Somebody tell us what value means. What, what's value? Value is, a, is if you are, if you are uh, having a goal in mind that kind of service that you're trying to provide, that person actually gets and you can actually utilize it for his benefit. Something can be used by customers. Okay. Return on investment or making money, right? So yes. revenue generation, customer. Um, wh what if you work for a compliance somebody, project? Somebody back here. Somebody Sorry. Back here. Yeah. Saving time. Saving time or saving money. So that my question was, what if you work for a <laughs> compliance project and you're not making any money? <laughs> how would you define value? Yes. Create bus business opportunity. Business opportunity. Yes, value in creation opportunities, values in knowledge, yeah. Exactly, it's, business. A, it's a simple uh, money saving project, right? The highest priority items in your compliance project is to get your executives out of jail, right? So, um, the second one is to keep your license as a bank, right? And so, so you can still prioritize, you can still find the value, but interesting that you guys came up with all the different definitions of value. Is, um, who's right, who's wrong here? Everyone is right, right? So we have so many different definitions of value. And unless we talk about this definition of value for our project, we might use the same word, this is valuable to me, or this, is, this should be valuable. But you might imply a different thing. So one of the, one of the uh, responsibilities of product owner is to actually define that value collaborative with, uh, co collaboratively with, uh, with other stakeholders. But sometimes, if you don't do that, you end up feature to filter down, which service design people call divergence. And we're calling that process, plus the confirmation, the structured confirmation, service. conversation. But the next question, so who, then if you are, pro yeah. Because once you release something, if you can just, yeah. I'm once you it. release something and you release it to the market, right, you start collecting feedback. And that's, you might end up in unlikely but really likely situation that that's not what customer wanted. So you need to go back to your exploration, right? So that's not customer wanted what he really or what she really wanted. So that, it's not once off process. You can't just, oh, we explored for the next five years. That's good enough, right? So it's, it's a continuous process of exploring and narrowing it down. In our pre-Agile way of thinking, yeah. we had a long exploration phase where a bunch of people sat in the project management or the business analyst op office and explored and created this big list. Then some smart people said, okay, we'll circle the items that get done and they got developed and it was released and that was the end or you pay, tr pay a lot of money for the next version. In this agile world, we're talking about iterations every week, every two weeks, doing a very quick explore at the beginning of the iteration, very quickly deciding on w evaluating what we're going to do that iteration and get it out, release it. So the first stage of the confirmation is conf confirming with your stakeholders that 
that you've evaluated what they'd like you to evaluate. The next stage of confirmation is getting that software to the customer's hands and then getting that feedback which feeds the next cycle of exploring again. But we back to the question, so who does a product owner take on the hunting journey on for, for the value? So who does the product owner talk to? Customers. Customer, right, it's an obvious one. But is just talking to the customer enough or do we need to take some, someone else in the Others, who, who are those? Yeah, who are those? Himself. Talk to himself. Voices, voices. <laughs> a lot of R&D, like you know, if you are innovating a new product, you look at the trends and go back and do research on gardeners or foresters yeah. and yeah. kind of figure out where the next Yeah, direction. so you might consult some other sources of information. Operations. Operations, finance, HR, it depends on what type of product you do, right? So you might consult subject matter expert in your organization. Customer, but this is some, some someone else. So that's the team. Team. The team. 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 Solution architect. Solution architect, that's Mind. all the right answers. End users. End users, users. End users. Scrum masters. Scrum masters. <laughs> so, so if we look at that, maybe if we go to this next slide, we actually have three different groups of stakeholders that, Steve will correct me now. <laughs> I won't correct you, but. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe I, I, um, yeah, I wanted to talk, I do, what I do want to do is talk about the product, the product partners. Um, so we've been talking about this one person called the product owner, who sometimes you're lucky enough to have Stalin as a product owner. And we're saying that's actually, nobody wants to have Stalin as a product owner because this hunt for value takes place in a partnership. And instead of assigning the product owner to hunt the value, we are forming a, par a partnership of product partners. And all the product partners want to get value out of the product. And the list of product partners is huge, but we're claiming that you can have three categories of product partners. The customer is the first partner everybody always thinks of. That's both, we're not distinguishing here between the customer and the user, but the customer partner is both the person who's paying for it and the person who's using it in this, in this model. So the customers are partners, but they're not your only partners. You have a whole class of partners, and they're the next partners that everybody thinks of, and those are the business partners. So they are your, your shareholders, they are the people who run your company, they're probably your boss, they might be um, uh, the finance office. These are the people in your business, and when we talk about stakeholders, we usually name those, the customer stakeholders, and the business stakeholders. They probably come to your sprint review meetings if you're doing Scrum. There's a whole third class of partners, which you guys have mentioned, but it, we often forget about the third class of partners, and that's the technology partners. So the technology partners are all the people involved in the technology of building the product, and that's the dev team. The dev team are partners in the product. So when we're talking about this conversation, the, looking for value, the dev team is there. And not just the dev team, if you're working in a large organization, the director of IT, the IT department, uh, the IT standards, the architecture board, they're, your, they're partners with you in the product, as well as the, the standards organizations, the hardware folks, they're, in your they're your technology partners. And another group of, uh, another example of technology partners is another team integration with you. They are technology partner because you need to consider their interests because they're one of the stakeholders you need, you need to also address their, uh, their um, needs when you build the product. Yes, so we have a quick exercise, right? Yeah. So you need to find uh, somewhere, maybe on the chair next to you or something, the, the orange, uh, orange. No, not orange, no? green. The green, the green handout. The yeah. green handout, it's two copies of the same sheet, um, so we're gonna do a quick uh, two minute exercise. Mm-hmm. So for our... Yeah, you go. Okay. So for... <laughs> so I'd like you to take two minutes, and in these two minutes, think about the product that you're working on at your table, and take two minutes to list as many product partners as you can, as many as you can, but I want, I'd like you to list two, at least two from each category. So at least two business, two customer, two technology. In two minutes, you might list more.
Okay. If you know the name of the person, yes. What's hard about it? Start wandering around the village to who your customers are. It is hard. It is hard. Yeah, so I think it's hard. It's hard in real life too, right? Um, but we're forming a company over here. We really like the, like the product we came up with. I was hoping that was going to happen. So, so that was a, that was a little bit more than a minute, or a minute, little bit more than two minutes. Have, have you got six? Has everybody got six partners written down? So for the next two minutes, for the next two minutes, what I'd like you to do is think about these six, par uh, pick six partners and write down what motivates those partners. So, so your compliance officer is motivated by keeping the company out of an audit, perhaps, um, keeping the company out of jail. Your I, technology partners motivated by having a clean architecture. I, try and find a motivation for at least one motivation for each partner in the next two minutes. In fact, we know you won't finish every conversation. What's important, we feel, is that you start the conversation and you have an experience of that conversation. Because when you go home, you're going to be wanting to continue this conversation. So don't be worried if you're not finishing the conversation. But uh, let's see fingers. How many, um, how many motivations did you come up with? Did you come up with six, four, four? I see some fours. Three, five, okay, one. Okay, I think I think that's that's good. Uh, the, the the team that has one might may, may be thinking of some more on the fly, maybe. Uh, so we want to come now. We really want to start the dojo. Yeah. So, uh, do I don't really understand so much about the martial arts where the term dojo comes from. I have been told that the dojo means in Japanese the place of the way, and a lot of things happen in the dojo. Uh, it's a spiritual place. It's also the place where people go to train, and so especially in America, when, uh, when people are learning the martial arts, they go to the dojo to practice their martial arts with other people, to master their skills. Someone who knows more about dojos than me, is that a fair enough description that we can there's usually someone who says you got it all wrong, so I'm, I'm open to that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, all right. So what we want to do is go into the, the dojo. This dojo, Rich, you may have seen this in Berlin. This, this dojo is based on a series of coaching dojos that I've done. And these dojos were based on the work of Rachel Davies, just to let you know that. And of course, Rachel Davies based it on Dave Thomas's work, who created some coding dojos. What we want to do in this discovery dojo is to find a product executive, you might even call that a product partner, who has a product need, and somebody needs to take the role of a product facilitator. Yeah, and so it's some sort of, the product facilitator would be a helper to help the product executive to discover the right value, to apply that value tool to the talk earlier. So because, because we knew we were going to have a diversity of different roles, we didn't want to name them specifically, but we want to talk about a person to facilitate the conversation and a person to, to answer the question might have a lot of knowledge about the product itself, uh, able to make decisions. Right, so that might be, there might be different scenarios, like there might be a product owner and a scrum master, or one might be a product owner on this side as a facilitator, and your product executive is some sort of senior stakeholder, project it, sponsor, for example. But we didn't want to frame it 
very specifically. So think of facilitator and, and some sort of a product manager or project person. In real life, the roles sometimes change. In real life, the scrum master might facilitate this conversation with the product owner. Other times, the product owner might facilitate this conversation with the stakeholder, as you said. Uh, many times, you may be in a situation where you, in a dev team, need to be using your skills to facilitate this conversation with the product owners if that's not taking place. So various people can take this facilitation role often. That's very much the job of the product owner, but not always. It needs to happen so many different people can take the facilitation role. So you can call that, but you would not want to frame because it might not apply to your particular environment. But do you, everyone understand the two roles? It's great. Let's, um. Okay, so I've probably gone down the rabbit hole. So I'm coming back out. <laughs> and so in this dojo, you need to have three roles. The product executive is the person who has the product need. So for you, it's your brave PO. Uh, the product facilitator is someone who wants to take on this facilitation role to practice. And then you have three, three or the rest of you are observers. And we're going to do it like this. If you're going to spend five minutes with the facilitator asking facilitative questions to the product executive. Two minutes will be a chance for the product executive to give feedback of what it was like. Then three minutes is everybody gets to give feedback, but the observers who've been sitting there observing the whole time get the first chance to give the feedback. And you see pictures of the chair on the wall because we're actually going to ask you to move your chairs so that the product facilitator faces the product executives and the, the observers are around. I want to tell you a couple things that come from the coaching dojo experience. We want to make this safe. So your product owners are sharing about their real product. We'd like that to be safe for them. So this is an invitation. They've give, extended the invitation to you to talk about this now, but they haven't really invited you to share it with the world or to critique it with the world. So keep that in mind. Keep that here. And we also, we also ask in a coaching dojo, in this dojo too, to, your role is, if you're a facilitator, your role is not to fix their product. Your role is to ask them questions to help them understand their product, but you're not trying to fix it. And finally, you hear something that you would like to talk about later. If that's the case, you approach someone later, they may or may not want to keep talking about it. So do ask them, is it okay to talk about it, and do you have time now to talk about it? That's, that's what I request. And to help you out a little bit, um, we also want you to, to ask powerful questions. Powerful questions are those that you get, uh, uh, where you get the powerful answer. So don't try to answer question a yes or yes or no question because there's only two options, yes or no, right? So try to ask question why, those are most powerful, or what. The how question, question is also powerful, but for the sake of this exercise, you might go down to too much technical detail. So leave that out as well. So focus on why and what. So, so we try it out. Yeah, so, so a uh, again, what uh, the idea here is we're going to spend the next 10 minutes evaluating. So given your general idea about what's in the product, pick, pick about six items, three to six, maybe one's maybe even maybe. okay, to implement in the next release. And for our sake, we're going to say a release is about six weeks, three sprints. And at this point, use what motivates your product partners as your value filter. So if you're the facilitator, ask some good why questions and some good what questions of your product executive to help them filter and choose based on the value. Let's start. All right, so we'll set uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so that was the five minutes. What we're going to do, so you can continue this conversation. We're going to change the criteria and ha do another dojo, so you, you'll get a chance to do this again. Uh, but now we're going to move into the first feedback round, and this is a chance for the person who was in the product executive role 
to tell you how it felt to be in the product executive role. So take two minutes to do that. Two minutes. What was it like for you as the executive? The next phase, and this is when everybody gets to tell what they noticed. What did you observe? And start with the people who were officially observing, but everybody gets a chance to tell what you observed. What did you observe? One question to ask: um, What surprised you do by doing the dodge dodge work? What surprised you? What surprised you? Yeah. Yes. Powerful question. Is that that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. There was a. There was something from this table. By asking questions, you think are important. Hey, can you touch it up and you make your user stories better? Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Yes. So by discussion, uh, the the picture was more vivid, right? So you you had a better idea through discussions, right? Um, all right. So we're done with the first dojo. Um, I think it's good enough. We we yes. Yes. This what? The whole conversation happened without documentation. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need documentation. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. So it doesn't mean you don't want to record the conversation after the conversation happened. It mean, all it means is documentation shouldn't be a replacement for your conversation. That's all it says. But you might record the conversation, or you might uh, you might write down the key points, outcomes of your conversation, maybe in the, in the matter of better user stories, right? So that might be outcome of output of your conversation. Document it doesn't documentation doesn't go away. You just need to understand what comes first. Come the conversation comes first. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And but if you don't have you enough, have Yeah, so let's run another round of Dojo. Uh, this time, uh, let's swap the facilitator. So product owners, you stay the same, but maybe let's give someone else a chance to be a facilitator. And by applying maybe one or two or uh, multiple different dimensions, try to see how your conversation evolves as well. So let's run another round based on the observations, based on the learnings of a group, plus based on these dimensions, there might be some extra questions which pop up in your head to ask your product owner or product executive. Yeah, the question was just to create the user story. Well, yeah, so we're not going to actually buy people. 
you just again like to just say three, two, one for six features, which they'll implement in the next release, but you can use the strength of that with other releases in your application. You wanna you wanna set up Was anything different? Was anything better or worse? Yeah. You're getting into more details, more specific functional requirements through dimensions by asking specifically around different dimensions. Okay. Um, other comments? More structure. Those dimensions give you a little bit more structure when you have those things in place. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great comment. My ability idea itself can answer your question. Um, all right. So let's wrap up. All right. So we have four minutes left. I wanted to mention really quickly, we're not going to be able to use it, but I wanted to mention very quickly why these papers are in the front of the wall. Uh, in the back, you might not be able to see it, but you see, but there is a paper for the different partners and then for each of the seven dimensions. So if you're going to have a workshop where you're helping people have this conversation, one thing you can do is create, this would be called an option board, and you can create the option board by putting these out on the wall and as you learn, you asked about documentation. As you learn something about the user, you can come over here and write it down under user. And the, these, old, um, these older tools that we used to have, they work really well here. When you're talking about the user, you might be doing something like creating an iteration map. When you're talking about the data dimension, you might be creating a data model. So that's how you would be able to start using this and creating some documentation. But the idea is not to create a year's worth of documentation. The idea is to create just enough to do the next iteration and then come back. So I just wanted to throw that out there to let you know that that's something you can look into. And you can download this option board. So if you're going to try to do this workshop, you can download the, the papers that let you do it at discovertodeliver.com. I think the main point we want to highlight today is product ownership is not about dictatorship, it's not about who shouts the loudest, but it's about facilitation, right? Asking the right questions and figuring out the right value. I started running these dojos in my product owner classes, and I do master classes, so I do classes for product owners who've been doing, being product owners for a long time. And a lot of times in the debrief, the thing I hear is, wow, it's really valuable to talk to other people. And I'm like, I'm really glad I helped you have that experience because, yeah, that's the idea. And people tell me, you don't have to do a dojo because they know to talk to other people. I'm like, yeah, well, and they don't always. <laughs> so the, uh, we mentioned passion. The other thing that I'm terribly passionate about that is the Agile Fluency Project. And the only thing I'll say about the Agile Fluency Project is about the way teams master agility and teams master agility over time and teams master the type of agility that they need for in their environment. And in mastering agility, their relationship to value changes. Your team's uh, relationship to value changes as you master agility. Because first, you master focusing on value. When you know how to focus on value, you can master delivering value. When you master delivering value, if you have the need, you can go on and master optimizing value. So. What we're talking about here was, is focusing on value, which could be the start of your journey on the Agile Fluency Pathway. So I just wanted to mention I'm very passionate about that. You can check out the Agile Fluency Project, which is a nonprofit uh, group that I'm a part of to learn more about Agile Fluency. And I am writing a book on Agile Fluency because I'm so passionate about it. Right now you have to judge it by the cover because that's all that's there right now. <laughs> You have to judge this book by the cover. And the name is Unleashing Value. And if you want to hear more about it, there's a URL here that you can visit to sign up to hear more about it. Or you can give me your business card or just talk to me. I'm around. I told you we'd show you the discount code again if you want to buy Ellen's book. Oh, it's on this slide as well. It's right here.
said May. So <laughs> the the uh, first iteration should up. be out by May. <laughs> the MVP iteration should be out by May. All right. Uh, I think it's time, it's time is up. Uh, we really had a good time, had a lot of fun with you guys. Um, well, enjoy the conference. I'm speaking again tomorrow, I think, but I'm speaking about Agile economics. Uh, so we need to talk about that. I can't wait to hear that talk. Yeah. I really can't. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the rest of the conference and goodbye. Thank you guys. happy?